Well, I want to share with you all uh, a real life example of using OCSS, um, how it helped me really to solve like, a real life um, situation that I had. Uh, and hopefully, if you guys would just you know, apply these techniques, it will help you all too. So, <clears throat> I was given the task to uh, create this module that you guys uh, see here in the screen. This is the new Yahoo, home, uh, Yahoo homepage. Um, and what you see seeing right here is uh, this little model right there. It's uh, the first thing that first thing that the user sees whenever uh, he comes to the page. Um, it's kind of like you know, wizard introduction module where you can you know do you know, add, add applications to, to your page or not. But um, the design considerations or the specs say that it had to be cross browser compatible, so it had to um, work on from i6 up to all the modern browsers. Um, he had to have, uh, have a multi-language support, which meant um, he had to work in other markets, whether not the US or um, you know, Spain, uh, Germany, Italy, all these languages. Um, he had to be accessible. At Yahoo, we really pay attention to uh, accessibility and we want to make sure that uh, all our uh, signs and uh, pages and applications are uh, Friendly. Um, so with all this, we you know it was it, was, it really was an aggressive deadline uh, to complete both the layout and functionality. And um, this was the you can probably see too much, but um, this was the UED asset that I was given um, to create this. Um, so. Yeah, basically you just have to like, you know, guess, you know, which part was matching which part on the on the model. Yeah, it was it wasn't it wasn't fun. So yeah, the result was this. <laughs> um, so you know that got me thinking really. I was you know why does the easy turn so complicated sometimes? Like why all these models that we see in our everyday lives, you know, we run the corners and drop shadows on them and whatnot. Why are it so hard sometimes to code? Why do we need to compromise? Why do we end up, you know, sometimes end up just throwing their extra spans or extra divs and, and whatnot just to make it look the like way we want it? Is it accessible really? Um, and why can't we just have like, a solid set of rules and structures like other platforms do? Um, so, like I said, so I was just uh, one day just talking with Nicole, a co working space. And I uh, just exposed my problem to her. Um, it was actually the day before my deadline to, uh, to uh, that I had to deliver this module, and I was just battling with uh, some A6 bug and you know running corners and whatnot. So I just told her, and she said, "You know what? Why don't you just, just give it a shot? Follow, follow the CSS. You can have a single, a simple, si single, simple markup structure. There is no any cross browser. It even works in A55, and um, it's gonna be like very minimal CSS." And it's going to be very scalable and easy to apply to you know, multiple designs. So, with that, I was I was able to get rid of, get rid of this, turn it into this, and that's the end result. And um, up to today, you know, we've been pulling out the web, the, the Yahoo homepage, when many different markets, uh, um, you know, different viable ways and and whatnot. And uh, he has some break on me, so I'm yeah, pretty happy with it. That was me. I was good on the module. So, the other thing that I would like to share with you is can I contribute with you guys um, something that we built? Uh, like I said, Danny, uh, Nicole, and I, uh, and Chris, we built this tool because you know, we were wondering why can't the web have this tool? Like other platforms do, so we know that take care for us of you know all the UI stuff. So you know, like I said, without if we have all the components, what's he talking about? It was a CSS builder. Uh, CSS builder is a tool that we built where in two or three clicks you may be able to create a module or to pick a predefined module that you know from front gallery. I mean, you are going to be able to um, modify its properties um, to create whatever design you want. Um, it's, it's built on top of 
why why and what was his life techniques. So uh, it's very uh, and it scales very well. Uh, and the beauty of it is just you create one and you can just plug it and play in any website that you want um, without being afraid of breaking or like getting around the corners all weird in the browser. So um, we're gonna give a little demo you know, of uh, the tool right now. In case you missed the uh, lighting talk that we did this morning. Um, so the first thing to notice when he says the stuff is scalable is that um, these modules can be put into any size grid. So um, the builder is actually <coughs> using the OOCSS grids, fixed grids, to lay out these um, different modules. Um, and what you notice when we change the size of the page is that the modules automatically adapt in both height and width. Um, that means that once you've defined one of these objects, you can reuse it in any different context where it's appropriate without feeling like you're going to need to adapt code. Um, pretty flexible. Alright, so um, just go ahead and pick up all your up here. Uh, needs more pink, and then I got a, an error for somebody who needs less pink. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just go ahead and enter an name, my module. Um, so, like I said, you know, you're presented with the module that you chose on. Um, and now you have on the right hand side, like a set of, um, kind of like a toolbar here, uh, where you can modify the properties of your module. So let's just go ahead and uh, modify the contours. Um, they just pick an our border. Actually, also modify the inner border. So. Or you can tell your have your designer tell you exactly what the border should be, and then you either way, make no, it. No, that works better. Um, and what about changing the background color, for example? So instead of pink, just make it. Oh, purple. Much better. Thank you. 